Thank you, Sister Gugu, for the warm welcome. Good morning to you. And good morning to the saints of God. Uh, today, it is Friday, and we ought to be grateful for God. If God would give us the opportunity and open our heart, eyes and be actually be able to see with our spiritual eyes, we would see what the evil one had planned against us. But the mercy of God said no. The mercy of God gave us another opportunity in life. And for that, we ought to be grateful. We ought that as we will be sitting at the feet of Jesus, give glory and honor unto him for his mercies. For we have been partakers of the blessings that have been bestowed upon us. And we thank the Lord for this week, for whatever was planned against us, whatever the devil had against us, we were able to conquer, not by our own might, nor our own wisdom. It was all through the mercies of God. That's Jeremiah would say, every morning new mercies we see, great is your faithfulness. Yes, friends, God does not give us stale bread. Every morning, heaven bakes us fresh bread in order to feed his people. Allow me with those words to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, let us sit together at the feet of Jesus. I would like to invite you all to read with me in the book of Matthew chapter 5. And we will commence reading from verse 1 up until verse 10. And I read in your hearing. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the kingdom. They will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be showed mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Verse 10, where we are this morning. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word now and forevermore. Amen. Since from Sunday, we were looking at the blessings and the teachings of Jesus that he was giving to the disciples and the multitudes who were seated at his feet. Many had gathered to listen to the beauty of his words. And we see here that the master himself was in the presence of the people, giving them the words of heaven, giving them the comforting words of heaven. And this morning, our focal point is on Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, where Christ utters the words, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The one thing that we can agree on is that salvation is costly because salvation costed the son of God. Salvation is costly because there was blood that needed to be shed in order for humanity uh, to be restored back to God. 
with salvation comes religion. And we can also agree in that religion is costly because those who follow or decide to follow Christ, Christ, when he calls his disciples, he's there, he says, anyone who wants to follow me, they may deny themselves and carry their cross and follow me. And therefore, allow me to say to you, if then, the, if then religion of following of Christ has to do with one carrying a cross, we can definitely say that religion is costly. And therefore, we can also say that the one who decides that they want to repent, the one who decides that they want to follow Jesus Christ, it can cost you tears because the process of repentance has a cost of tears because of the things that you will have to, 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 to suffer in the long run of Christianity or in the journey of Christianity. Allow me to also submit to you this morning that repentance can also cost the blood of persecution. Those who decide to be followers of Christ, those who decide to deny themselves, they can find themselves being persecuted. It could cost their life. It could cost them their life. And therefore, allow me to submit to you that despite the fact that the following of Christ, becoming a disciple of Christ can be costly and can lead so, to so much uh, pain and hardships, there is encouragement that despite the fact that you may, there may be tears along the way, despite the fact that uh, there may be blood that is shed along the way, but Christ here in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, he gives them an encouragement that should keep them going in times of, of adversity, that despite the fact that they might find themselves being persecuted, but persecution is not the end of the life of humanity. However, there is something to attain, which is the kingdom of God. And therefore, allow me to submit to you that when Christ says, blessed are those who are persecuted, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, he says to them, the present, yes, it may be painful, but there is a blessing at the end of the journey. And therefore, this morning, uh, we will look at the blessing and the persecution in two general parts. That is the condition of the godly in this lifetime. And that is their persecution. And also we will look at the, at the reward that they have, which is the kingdom of God. And therefore, as we consider and look closely into uh, the persecution of those who are followers of Christ, we can agree on the fact that true godliness is usually attended with persecution. True godliness is usually attended with persecution. There is always tribulation for those who thoroughly or who faithfully believe in Jesus. There is persecution to those who have faith and have decided to follow Jesus. And that could not be a surprise for us because he himself, he suffered in this earth and those who followed after him, they suffered in himself. They, they suffered for following Jesus and he actually prepared them for the journey of, of suffering. Thus, even Paul himself, uh, when he speaks of suffering in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 15, he, he spoke of suffering on this earth that there will be times when people will suffer. There will be times when people will be persecuted because of their faith. And you know, the funny thing 
uh, that you find in, in the sufferings of Paul is that his suffering was not one that was distant. His suffering was not one that was from enemies that were from outside, but his suffering was from within the community of believers. His suffering was from within the ones that he was walking with in this journey of Christianity. Oh, allow me, saints, this morning to submit to you this uh, this morning that at times our suffering or our persecution might not be afar, but our suffering may actually be inside. In the Kosa nation, they would say, our death is within the pot because our greatest danger may at times not be from the outside, but our greatest danger may be from the inside. As even when you look at the people who nailed Christ at the cross, it is the people who are busy shouting Hosanna, but at the end, they were the ones who were hanging him on the cross. You would look at the people to whom Paul was preaching to. Some of them were those who were waiting for the Messiah. Some of them were those who were at the presence of the Messiah. But it is the same people that also were part of the persecution and were part of the plots that were made against the Apostle Paul. Oh, let, friends, allow me to submit to you that in as much as we may carry that cross, yes, Christ has died for us in order that the curse that was bestowed upon us when our first parents had sinned may be alleviated from us. However, it has not taken away from us the cross that we need to bear in our Christian journey. We will still need to bear the cross that we have to bear in this Christian journey. And that cross that we need to bear comes with the persecution. Though we may live a life that is meek, though we may live a life that is merciful at heart, though we may live a, heart, a life that seeks after righteousness, however, that will not shield us from suffering. A righteous life, a merciful life, a godly life will not shield us from suffering. You will suffer just because you live a godly life. You will suffer for the sake of righteousness. You will suffer just for your presence of, be, of being in the midst of the followers of Jesus Christ. The way, to be, the way to heaven has thorns. The way to heaven is filled with blood. The way to heaven, it is not easy. Oh, allow me to say to you, though it may not be easy, but we have this beauty and this comfort that the Holy Spirit is able to comfort us in our journey of persecution, in the trials and tribulations that we encounter in this life, God is able to carry us. God is able to hold us with our righteous head, with his righteous head. Oh, allow me to submit to you this morning that before Israel, that before Israel could get to Canaan, a land that was flowing with milk and honey, they had to first experience the wilderness. And the wilderness was filled with serpents. Allow me to say to you, as they were journeying in the, to the land of Canaan, they had to fight certain enemies. Allow me to say to you this morning that as they were journeying to the land of Canaan, there were times when they had to, to cross the Red Sea. There were times when they would, yes, they would go to Canaan. There were times in the journey where they would get thirsty. However, despite that fact, Christ was present with them. 
God was present with them. He led them throughout the way. The, Lord, the way to Canaan is never easy because from Egypt to Canaan, there is a wilderness. But allow me to say to you, there is a God who sustains the journey between Egypt and Canaan. Oh, friends, the children of God in this passage, and as much as they were there going through their suffering, but God was present. God was present to sustain them. God was present to hold them with his righteous hand. What do I mean when I say, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of their righteousness, for they will inherit the kingdom of God. The Greek word to persecute, it signifies to vex and to molest, to pursue someone to death. Therefore, the church is described as a lily among the thorns. The church is described as a lily among the thorns. There are going to be thorns along the way. It is not going to be an easy journey. Allow me to submit to you that the first church suffered for even in the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 52, and also in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 36. There we actually get to see that suffering and persecution of God's people, it came by the hand of other people. Other people were there to persecute them. Other people were executors of the death of the people of God. Allow me to submit to you this morning that there are people within the church of God that make it their mission to destroy other people. There are people in the church of God that make it difficult for other people to do the work of God. And it's not going to be the first time because it was also there in the New Testament church. But that does not say you should stop doing the work of God. Continue doing the work of God faithfully, knowing that you are not suffering because of your own doings, but you are suffering in order to fulfill what has been given unto you by the Messiah. Allow me to submit to you that in the New Testament and even today, there, are people, there is persecution of the tongue. Yes, people, there is persecution of the tongue. People shall speak ill of you because of your faith. I don't know if you've never experienced a presence where, Abandu, uh, where, where people actually say, oh, this is Ellen White. Oh, this is James White. Oh, he likes to make himself better. Oh, such and such a thing. That is the kind of people that you are living amongst today. Friends, let us take heed of becoming persecutors. Something that... Persecution is by sword and fire only. However, nowadays, the tongue is the greatest persecutor of God's people. Oh, friends, allow me to submit to you this morning. Let us watch out what we say with our mouths. For today, the greatest danger is our tongue. The things that we say, the things that come out of our mouth, they are persecuting the people of God. They are killing the people of God. Oh, I pray to God this morning that I do not go around persecuting his people with my tongue. I pray this morning that God may control my tongue so that whatever I say may give life and power to other people and not kill them. Oh, allow me to submit to you that persecution comes in different forms. Persecution comes in different forms. There is a persecution of open enemies. The wicked hate the godly. Many a times we are always aware of the fact that there is always a war between the godly and the wicked. As it is written in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the Proto-Evangelion, the first gospel that was preached in the Garden of Eden when humanity had sinned. There was enmity that was put 
between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And also there is the secret, the secret enemies, the secret enemies. Those secret enemies are the people who pretend the friendship, uh, the, 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 the friendships that are filled with pretense, but secretly they, they, they raise persecutions against us. Such are the hypocrites and heretics. Oh, friends, I don't know in your life if you've ever met with a Judas. I don't know if you've been hugged with a hug of betrayer. There are some who seem to be our friends, and yet when they hug us, it seems as if they are giving us a hug of love. They are kissing us with a kiss of love. However, that kiss is a kiss of betrayal. Yes, there are two forms. There are two forms of persecutors. Let us be aware of those that hug us with a hug of betrayal. Paul calls them in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Paul calls them false brethren. There are many who are false brethren around us. There are many who are false brethren, even at the presence of Jesus, as they were seated at the presence of Jesus, listening to the words of Jesus. As we said in our introduction, yes, there were many who were at the feet of Jesus, who wanted to listen to the words of Jesus, but not all of them had the right motives. Not all of them had the good intentions of being at the presence of Jesus. There are those who are there just to betray him. There are those who are there just to persecute other people who have come to be at the presence of Jesus. Oh, friends, oh, friends, in the last days, in the last days, oh, friends, in the last days, even in the church of God, there will be times when we will be asking questions. There will be times when we will be at wonder asking, is this still the church of God? But allow me to submit to you that it remains, it remains, and it will forever be the church of God because Christ died for his church, despite the fact that certain things may occur within the church of God, but it remains the church of God because amongst the persecutors, there always remains the faithful re remnant of God. There always remains the faithful remnant of God who always are faithful to what God requires. It does not change it and makes it something else just because within there are persecuted. There are persecuted. It remains the church of God despite the persecutors that might be within the church of God. Oh, friends, thus. Blessed are those, blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, friends, at times we might find ourselves thinking that uh, persecution has a way of making us holy. Persecution does not give anyone holiness. It should not be our endeavor that we rush for holiness, for persecution, because persecution does not give us any holiness. What attains us, the kingdom of God, what makes us attain and have a relationship with God, it is the fact that we seek the Messiah constantly, not because we are persecuted. Friends, some of us may run to our own swords and say that we are being persecuted when we are suffering the consequences of our sins. Let us not say we are being persecuted. Those who attain the kingdom of God, when God says that, blessed are those who are persecuted for their righteousness, not for suffering the consequences of their actions. When we suffer the consequences of our sinfulness, let us not say we are being persecuted. Let us be able to separate between the two. We attain salvation of, uh, we attain salvation through having a constant relationship with Christ. And because of our righteousness, 
it comes with the persecution. It is something that comes along the journey of our Christianity, not us having to run for being, to be persecuted in order for us to be called righteous. Because righteousness, because persecution does not attain anyone righteousness, nor does it attain anyone salvation. But allow me to say to you, those who attain salvation, those who attain the kingdom of God, it is those who suffer for the sake of righteousness. Blessed persecution is when we have good ends of our suffering. That is to, that is to glorify God, to set a seal of the truth and show our love to Christ. In the process of our suffering, in the process of our suffering, we should take heed of the following. As you are suffering, as the people are persecuting you, it is your duty as the victim to pray for your persecutors. It is your duty for those who suffer for the sake of righteousness. They do not curse their persecutors, but they pray for their, for, 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 for their persecutors. And when they pray for their persecutors, they do not pray a prayer of evil, but they pray a prayer that they may prosper. They pray a prayer of lifelong to them. It is a duty of the victim to love their enemies. Oh, friends, it is difficult to love your enemy if you do it by your own strength. It is difficult to love your enemies if you do it by your own wisdom. But you will love your enemies when it is no longer you that lives, but it is Christ that lives in you. Oh, friends, we do not hate those who do evil to us. But instead, instead, we pray for them. And we actually see this in the life of Stephen. When he was persecuted, the one who was suffering for his righteousness, when Stephen was being persecuted, as he was being stoned, instead of cursing them, instead of cursing them, Instead of wishing them that they should suffer for their consequences. Oh, this man of God, he prayed for his persecutors. He prayed for his persecutors that God may forgive them. That God may not count their act upon their head. Such is a righteous man. Such is a man who suffers for righteousness. Oh, allow me to submit to you, friends, that every injury we suffer shall serve to make our crown heavier. Every stone which has been thrown of Stephen was, was a precious stone which, was, which enriched him and made him shine brighter in the kingdom of heaven. If you do not understand this, you will see it in the life of Joseph. Those that thought that they were persecuting him. They never knew him. They never knew it, that they were elevating him as they were sending him to Egypt. They thought that they were sending him to his death. However, God remembered, remembered Joseph and elevated him to higher ground. There is a tendency of those that seek our life, that seek uh, that seek evil against us. There is a tendency of God just showing off with us and elevating us to higher ground. Oh, friends, if you do not understand this, see it in the life of David as he was busy looking after the flock of his father. God showed off with him and said, no, I do not see any of this who are capable of leading my people. But I see a man. I see a man. I have prepared.
prepared him whilst he was out there in the fields. I have prepared him to serve me. I have prepared him to live, to, 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 to lead out or to lead the people of God. Allow me to say to you, though they may persecute you, though they may show you in dungeons, though blood may fall, though tears may fall, though they may reject you because of your faith, but allow me to say to you, God has a way of showing off. He has a way of showing off in the presence of your enemies. Oh, friends, allow me to say to you, because of your suffering, of, because of your suffering of righteousness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Blessed are those who suffer for their righteousness, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. May God sustain you. May God shine his face upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, our gracious God who art in heaven, thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us. Oh, Lord, we may have been persecuted. Our families might have rejected us because of our faith. But praise be to God that despite those calamities, we are able to find comfort in you. Bless your people, strengthen them as they walk with you. Be a light unto their path till the day of your appearing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Oh Lord, help us to carry our cross. Help us fix our eyes on you, dear Jesus, so that we can endure the wilderness, knowing that you are by our side. Yes, we may suffer for a little while, but a day is coming where our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will come and deliver us from the misery of this life. Thank you so much, Mfundisi. May the good Lord richly bless you. Today, children of God, we will not um, go to our separate prayer rooms, but we will have a collective prayer. And a special prayer today is focused on KZN. We have seen what is happening to God's people there. I will ask the three um, individuals that have been assigned to lead us in prayer, Brother Itu Mabuye, Mama uh, Nomti Papu, and Brother Mundu Mukwena in that order. Can you please kindly lead us as we intercede and pray for God's children and pray also for those assisting them as well. Over to you. 